Hello, everyone. I think I would have been uh, better introduced as someone who has always been rejected by mainstream conventional systems. So what happened is my schooling journey was very interesting. Uh, I did my schooling in an SSC board school, and in 10th grade, all the students have to pass through a test called aptitude test. So you do some tick marking, and they'll decide you what's your career path, what is your life going to be like. Fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know yet, but that, tell, that told my parents that your child is a remedial child. They got this result and they were like, theek hai, kuch to matlab hota hoga. At this point, we are not worried. And luckily, they slipped that result somewhere else. That's how I completed my schooling, entered into a diploma course because I got some basic percentage. I was doing diploma and somewhere between my diploma course, mom told me she wants to learn khatla work. Now, khatla work is very male-dominating space. And it's very old form of art, and somewhere, you know, it's not somebody who is just like, there's a workshop running and you can go and learn it. Also, it requires this stand, which is very uncomfortable to get it at home, and something which has been run commercially, but not something where anybody can adopt it as a hobby. So me and my dad, uh, we thought, OK, mom wants to learn it. Let's build it for her. Dad runs a cloth shop in Bombay, and generally is it expected that if it's a cloth shop, you'll get more scissors in the cloth shop. But our cloth shop had more tools. So I was always around with these hand tools, power tools from my schooling life. And me and my dad thought, OK, she wants, let's build it as Jugaad DIY version. We also used to get many kids around our society who used to come at shop, come at home, build something ask my dad or my mom for any things, and we used to help them build their projects also, so we gathered them to build this khatla work also. We thought it is something we are helping mom to do, but later on we realized mom wanted to teach more and more people. At some point we made 1,200 khatlas. Mom taught more than 1,200 people, especially mothers, how to do this khatla work. This khatla work was giving these women anything between 500 to 5,000 for one job work they do. And that's how we cherished our hobby. But something really pressed is you never know your hobby might be living for someone. And that's when, you know, this tinkering mind started thinking beyond just a DIY maker or just a simple maker. Somehow, you know, my academics has always been bad, so I completed my diploma course, entered into the degree course, and of course, degree course gives you a lot of challenges, so it gave me around 15 to 20 KTs, with some of the repeated KTs also. So college decided that he has a lot of KTs, so let's do one thing, let's give him a one-year break, which is called a drop year. So I thought, okay, this is a one-year break, what should I do in this? Of course, you don't have to study because you have to pass three, four exams, which are your gold and silver and, I don't know, titanium KTs. So I thought, OK, easily you have one year to do that, so we'll do that. But in this one year time, what should I do? And that is when I bumped into these two amazing people called Jaya Ramchandani and Nash Paul. These were the festival directors of the Story of Light Festival, which happens every alternate year. It's a festival by... UNESCO and International Year of Light. And uh, since I was this tinkerer, tinkerer, I ran into them and I told them that I'll do anything and everything you want me to make, build stuff. Because as it is for one year, I'm doing nothing. So they were like, OK, come to the festival, stay with us. This festival used to have around 17 different countries involved, 18 artists, 18 scientists from different countries, and you get to stay with them for 30 days. That was an experience. And 30 days is the installation period, so you stay with them, you learn with them, you build many of these installations with them. And uh, overall, it was a good experience, and uh, at that point, I realized, if this drop didn't get this drop, I would have been the worst miss out. So I was very lucky that I got this drop. So one thing what I want you all to understand is, you know, at times these setbacks are given you 
so that you can experience something which nobody would make you experience in your mainstream routines. So cherish the setbacks. I would also urge that the, when the setback is coming, at that point, at that day, you'll make, it may will feel you worst. It might make you feel that you don't want to exist in that portion of your life, but the next day is going to be better. Of course, you know, right, bad academics, so I didn't got any jobs. I was jobless for six months. But yeah, somewhere that tinkerer inside me was alive, so I thought I conquered one balcony from my mom. I told her, mom, can you give me the balcony? And I'll set it up a small lab where kids would come, play, tinker. There was some junk kept, so kids were allowed to build stuff there. And that's how my six months of joblessness went with these kids making stuff. My dad was also the same kind of person, so over weekends, me and dad used to sit and build things. And after six months, I got a job, which was very good enough, and it's still running, and it's still the same job after nine years. I ran that balcony lab for three years, and then thought that this has made a remarkable change in the kids who were coming to that place. These kids were so much equipped that they were kind of a self-directed learner, because what one thing we did is, we had kept two laptops there. The laptop had a sticker, YouTube-DIY-Project Name. So anything you want to build, go on YouTube, write DIY and write your project name and start building. So somewhere running that series for three years, all of them were more like a self-directed learners. And I found out that you, know, you have to scale somewhere this whole idea. And how do you scale? And when I meant scale, I wanted how can I accommodate more people because balcony is still small. And so I started thinking about, you know, what, how can we get more people involved? And that is when uh, I was able to meet Navneet, TMM, and Lacks Uncle, who made this possible, and we created a 7,000 square feet lab. It's a not-for-profit lab, and kids can come and build their stuff. It's open for everybody to do that. And we realized that what we are doing is good. We were quite a good of volunteer-driven group who was running this space. One thing which really made us learn that everything you want to do can start small, can start without large amount of grants or large seed fundings or X, Y, Z, the startup world is telling you, document everything you do. It will pay off at some point. Document everything. The COVID pandemic hit and everybody was locked at home. Uh, we all were bored at some point after watching these Netflix series and Prime. What happened is, at some point in my life, at our home, the sewing machine was used for living. But later on, we all grew up and we were doing somewhat well in life, so we thought, now we don't need sewing machine for living, and we kept it somewhere in the box. At this point, we were all bored, so we thought, chalo, let's remove that out and make something. So what we decided is, I drew something, Dad made cardboard prototypes, Mom made a sample copy, of this Tiffin bag, and we thought, let's click some pictures and send it to a few people we know, so that we get some feedback about what do we do, because as it is, we are sitting home doing nothing. We made a few more copies of it and started giving out to people. We started sharing pictures of it, and here is where we landed. We had six products, 553 pre-orders already. Nothing was commercial, nothing was online, nothing was Instagram running. Everything was by just making one product, sending photos, and getting it. And again, we landed to the same thing, that how do we scale this? And when I meant scale, more than you know, earning profits or selling these products, how can we involve more people in this project? Because overall, this was a good thing to do where everybody was logged into home. And that's when we realized Father had a cloth shop. Father has a cloth shop where, if you know, saris need this fall pico, right? Saris need this fall pico, and at a shop, there are many women who used to come at the shop, collect these saris, go at home, they have their stitching machine, do the fall pico, next day come back and give it to us. COVID was there, nobody was buying new saris. All of these women were kind of jobless or running short of job work. Let's upskill these women. They already have a saving machine, they already have time because we were as it is at home. Only thing is which was required is training. One sari fall pico would give them anything between 15 rupees to 25 rupees, depending on where you stay, what locality. 
One bag stitching would easily give them 250 to 400 rupees, depending on what bag you're stitching. The material what we were getting to stitch these products was fabric waste, it was curtain waste, it was cushion waste. So you're actually upcycling all the products. Since the whole project, you know, started from my mother, there were more mothers involved in stitching it, there were more mothers involved in cutting and doing all of it. We thought this would need a nice name. The name has to evolve around mothers. And so we added the name Silai, something which is handmade, something which is mom made. So then finally, okay, yeah, just to tell you, we still don't have a functional Instagram page. We just have created an Instagram page. So we, we are still not that commercial. We are not doing, this is all because those women were sitting around doing nothing and we could uplift them. But we started creating these high quality products so that every high quality product created should give a high quality margin to that woman who's sitting there. Something when we were actually going out and telling people that why you should buy this product struck me that more than telling them the need of the product, when we told them the story of the product, the product went off very easily. Like we didn't have to tell them the price. They were paying, they were paying double and thrice the amount of it. There's a lab in IIT Bombay campus. It's called Tata Center for Technology and Design. This lab only works for social impact projects. So I would tell you something about cervical cancer. There are many, uh, you would ha all have many women around you. Most of them are not aware about cervical cancer if you count rural cities, rural areas, and remote places. It's the second leading cancer around one like that deaths are there in India just because of cervical cancer. And there is a traditional method which tells you how to do the cervical cancer and it's there and present all around. So what happens is the cervix has been opened, a tissue has been teared from the cervix and it is placed on a, a slide and it goes for the screening to a path lab. If you're in Bombay, it happens very fast, but if you're not in Bombay or not in metro cities, it takes three to 15 days for that slide to reach the right path lab collection center. The pathologist will sit and count the cell and tell you what it is. This might need too many things, which is a skilled technician, people who will safely take your slide. And there were too many limitations in all of this process. What intervention we did is we tried to digitalize this whole cervix. So we take a picture and do image processing and tell it how it is. We made this device, we made the whole kit, and we thought as an engineer we solved the problem. We made a device which is doing everything well, we digitalized it modernized generation, we solved the problem. We made the copy, sent it to some 20 odd states of India, collected feedback from it, and then understood that, okay, we did a good job. People have given us good feedback. We made a final copy of it, and we understood that somewhere we have solved the problem of cervical cancer. After we made the right real copy of it and went, went to people to talk about cervical cancer, we understood if you count remote places, people don't even know what is cervical cancer. Forget about cervical cancer, they don't even know whether any kind of cancer will be found in the cervix. Also, India's rural population is somewhere considered where women's health is not the first priority. And so, we went back to the offices, started creating video content material in different languages, started to create training material in different languages so that first of all, we have to educate them with what is cervical cancer, educate them how to keep safe hygiene, educate them how to use the device. Doorstep training was being given about how do you even find out if you are going through any type of cancer or any type of cervical cancer. We had to train these women. One thing we understood from this is, you know, getting a tech or a high-tech product is not going to solve today's generation's problem, which is not us but the rural generation. You'll need to go beyond the lines, you'll need to go off your tech circle and build things around their ecosystem so that things are evolving much better way. This is the last and my interesting project I did, which has always been the amazing one because it gives me a best closing ending. So all this while, you know, I've struggled in academics or like career or like building products or building services. And so we thought that this is the best experience I've got and how can I give this experience to all of the students? So all these experiences have converted to task. 
and these are card, card games. These card games, when we went out to few schools, it went a super hit. When this idea went super hit, my call, school called me. Hey, Zubin, uh, you're free to talk. Will you be able to come to school? So I said, yeah, yeah, I'll come to the school. You tell me what it is. We are trying to design new curriculum and new system for our school kids. And do you think you can be able to help us? I told them, yes, the remedial child will be able to help you. Always try to put your stories with more purpose. Try to fail fast. Do things fail fast. The last thing I would tell you is, at some point, you have to stop thinking, start making, start doing, and start building stuff. Thank you.